DePaul Basketball is brought to you in part by True Value. Got a tough job to do? You can do it with True Value Hardware Stores. United Airlines, the airline that's uniting the world, is proud to be Chicago's hometown airline. Come fly the friendly skies. And McDonald's of Chicagoland in Northwest Indiana. You deserve a break at McDonald's today. Live tonight from the Rosemont Horizon, the season finale for DePaul, and what a way to end it as they take on their arch rivals, the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame. Good evening, everybody. Dan Rohn along with John Mengel. Glad you could be with us for this one. It should be a great game here tonight. DePaul and Notre Dame, a couple of teams who really want to win this game, but for different reasons, John. Notre Dame, of course, trying to play its way into the NCAA tournament with a victory here tonight. Dan, there are some backers in Notre Dame that think they don't have to win tonight, that they could simply win at Evansville. I'm one that thinks they have to win tonight or play very well here, and they've had kind of an up-and-down year. You look at the teams they played, they've had some real big-time wins. They go unset for, but you go to their losses in the NCAA. They look very close. They have bad losses. And you look at some of them, Butler, Dayton, Boston College, West Virginia, but some of them were in December. And maybe they won't look at them as close then, but hey, the committee's going to make their choice on next weekend. Well, John McLeod's had a tough year. Probably he's pulled some of that hair out coaching as the Irish for the first time. But uh, one thing he has been able to rely on is a play of his senior, Alfonso Ellis. Definitely so. And if you'll look at Alfonso's statistics, he plays better in the big time games against the ranked team. But the one thing John McLeod said to me before we got on the air tonight was that he really liked the way Alfonso was playing very hard and very consistently and thought he would be a great pro. Now, Joey Meyer's team is already in the NCAA tournament. Nobody's questioning that. And tonight, they'll have two players back who didn't play in the loss to Marquette on Wednesday. Well, they definitely they had wanted posters out for these guys. They missed them very badly. Of course, Curtis Price, big-time board man, great defensive player. And they missed him badly at the end of the ball game. Marquette got the last... 14 defensive rebounds of the ball game. And of course, you can't say enough about David Booth. He's the leading scorer, and he's the guy they go to in the key times at the end of the ball game, and he wasn't there. They're both here tonight. So the Fighting Irish knocked off the ball back in January at the ACC. The Blue Demons will try to return the favor here tonight. Starting lineups and opening tip coming your way in just a moment. invest an average of 1.8 million dollars a day to reinforce and expand the transmission and distribution of electricity in northern Illinois because after over 100 years of service there's one thing we've learned to expect the unexpected now more than ever we're there when you need us in pilot jargon it's called a walk around you see them do it before every takeoff of every plane what you don't see are their qualifications to fly those planes. It takes them years and thousands of hours of experience. And every year they're schooled and tested. No exceptions. Because when you're a United pilot, you hold a lot more in your hands than just the controls. Come fly the airline that's united the world. Come fly the friendly skies. Gillette presents Sensor, the system the technology that will change the way you shave forever. Sensor, twin blades set on springs to read your face and respond. Independent suspension to sense and adjust to every curve of your face. No other razor comes close. Gillette Sensor, for the best shave a man can get. This great Midwest moment is brought to you by Old Style Classic Draft and Draft Life. The 1960-61 season ended with Cincinnati going to its third straight Final Four, playing its Buckeye State neighbor, Ohio State. Cincinnati led till late in the game when a Buckeye basket forced overtime. Paul Hogue hit two free throws, helping Cincinnati clinch a 70-65 win to become Cincinnati's 22nd consecutive victory and its first of two straight national titles. This great Midwest moment was brought to you by Old Style Classic Draft and Draft Life. Back at the Rosemont Horizon, Dan Rohn along with John Mengelt. Senior night here. DePaul's seniors playing their final game at the Rosemont Horizon. Right now, let's meet them and the starting lineups with Jim Reban. And now, let's meet tonight's starting lineups. 
first for the visiting Fighting Irish of Notre Dame. At forward, 6'8", and a senior from East St. Louis, Illinois, number 20, Lafonso Ellis. At the other forward is a 6'4", freshman from Aurora, Illinois, number 30, Billy Taylor. At center, 6 and 11 and a senior from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Number five, Keith Tower. At one guard is a 6'5 senior from Beaumont, Texas. Number 22, Damon Sweet. And at the other guard is six foot senior from Houston, Texas. Number 12, Elmer Bennett. Fighting Irish head coach is a 1959 graduate of Bellarmine. In his first season, John McLeod. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please direct your attention to center court where DePaul University pre president, the Reverend John T. Richardson, along with DePaul Athletic Director Bill Bradshaw and Associate Athletic Director Jean Letty Ponsetto are standing. As a tribute to our seniors, it has been our tradition to honor those young men and their parents at the final men's home basketball game, and tonight, the tradition continues. The first senior we would like to honor is manager Tom Schaefer, who is accompanied by his parents, Robert and Marie Schaefer. Our second senior honoree is manager Chris Ferraro, who is accompanied by his parents, Carl and Cheryl Ferraro. Although our next senior did not play this season, he is still DePaul's all-time leader in three-point shooting, and he is also one of the top free-throw shooters in Blue Demon history. Please honor Brad Neiman, who is accompanied by his parents, Art and Marlene Neiman. One of the best shot blockers in Blue Demon history. Our next senior played only two seasons at DePaul, but has helped the Blue Demons to 39 wins in the last two years as he has started 33 games in his career. Please enter from Waxahachie, Texas, Jeff Stern, accompanied by his mother, Barbara Battle. A tri-captain of the Blue Demons in 1991-92. Our next senior has also played only two seasons, but will have left his mark as he will finish his career in the top 10 at DePaul in assists and three-point field goal shooting. A two-year starter for DePaul, let's honor the pride of Crane High School, Joe D, Joe Doherty, accompanied by his parents, Curly May and Joseph Doherty. Our next senior was also a tri-captain this season, and he will finish his career as one of the finest players in DePaul history. He will end his Blue Demon career ranked in the top five in career scoring and rebounding, and holds the Blue Demon record for free throws made in a career. A first team academic All-American last season, he was just named yesterday as a first team academic All-American for this season. Please honor from Dallas, Texas, Stephen Howard, accompanied by his parents, Smith and Janice Howard.
Our final senior is one of the greatest players in DePaul history. He will finish his career as the second all-time leading scorer and also ranks in the top five in career steals, free throws made, blocks, minutes played, and field goals made, and is in the top 15 in scoring average and rebounding. DePaul's other tri-captain this season, he is a finalist for the 1992 Wooden Award given to the top player in college basketball. Standing six foot seven, from Peoria, Illinois, number 30, David Booth. Accompanied by his parents, Rudy and Yvonne Booth. Ladies and gentlemen, let's salute the senior members of the DePaul men's basketball team. And rounding out tonight's starting lineup, at guard, 6'4", and a junior from College Park, Georgia, 25, T.D. Terry Davis. <laughs> DePaul's head coach, a 1971 graduate in his eighth season, is Joey Meyer. So an emotionally charged building here tonight, John Mingelt. The seniors making their final appearance here at the Rosemont Horizon. Uh, that gives them a little bit of extra incentive, I think, for the game tonight. Not that they ever need it when they play Notre Dame. Well, no, as we mentioned up front, this is a big ball game for DePaul. Their loss at Marquette hurts them a little bit in the seating. Of course, they can uh, reinstate themselves as a top 20 team here tonight. Uh, one thing you got to be careful of as a... A, a senior, a graduating senior with all this hoopla is you, you got to refocus yourself on the ball game and, and try to, you know, put that other stuff out of your mind because I've seen people come out so jacked up that they shoot the ball over the backboard. So you really got to refocus yourself. On the other hand, Notre Dame's got the other problem. They've been standing over there for 10 minutes and they've got to try to get themselves juiced up again after they were announced. So a little bit of an unusual circumstance here tonight for both clubs. So the start will be very interesting to watch. The 85th game in this long-standing series, the Irish with that 10-game edge that DePaul will try to cut into here tonight. First time for Notre Dame coach John McLeod in this building. I'll tell you one thing. I remember the score the last time uh, John played in Chicago. He was coaching the Knicks, and they lost by 42 <laughs> points to the Bulls in the playoffs last year. I'll, uh, I'll bet he doesn't stay in the same <laughs> hotel. No way. We're ready to go. Curtis Price and Lafonso Ellis at the center jump, and it's DePaul ball to start things out. Howard is free, but he missed it. The rebound is no good in the Price dunk attempt. He's down, but he's up now, and the Irish in a hurry. Turn it right back over. Ellis that time. Doherty to Davis, and they'll try to calm things down. Sure they will. Booth for three, no good. Howard's got the rebound. He's going up again. And a blocking foul called on Notre Dame. Howard may be hurt. It looked like he hit pretty hard on the floor. Well, he's up bouncing around now. Well, the adrenaline will take care of some of it right now. It's right later on, on that you got to worry about when that adrenaline stops. Howard very aggressive early in the ball game. Takes the ball very strong to the hoop against Tower and comes down pretty hard. Well, he stepped on someone's foot, it appeared, anyway. And looks like he's holding his, not really his ankle, kind of his arch on his foot. And... Usually those things are okay for a while, and then the, you go down at halftime, and they get cold, and they become difficult. Well, he'll take the free throws, and then we'll take it from there. Joey Meyer has no one at the scorer's table as Stephen Howard opens the scoring tonight. Stephen, a 79% free throw shooter this year. Leading the great Midwest Conference. Kind of unusual that a, a center would lead the conference in free throw. Stephen's got them both. He's going to play on to fall into its trap as they usually do against uh, after the made free throw. Notre Dame trying to handle it. Diamond in one zone press, then they'll drop back into a pretty aggressive man-to-man. -man. Terry Davis and Elmer Bennett out front. And watch David Booth. He hasn't played in nearly two weeks. We'll see how that ankle holds up. He was able to get in front that time and knock the ball away. 
Howard thought about the three, didn't take it. Might have walked. <laughs> He's got that shot, John, against Tower anytime he wants it. I think you'll see him bringing David outside a little bit more tonight because he can hit that 19, 20 footer. And I'm not sure Tower will come out with it. Here he goes. Inside. Slung it up there. No good. Got his own rebound and score. Joey Meyer choosing to go down low and use Howard's quickness on Tyre, making quick moves down low, and Steven on the follow shot. Had 18 rebounds the other night against Mark Tech. Set it up and in by Bennett, who burned the Blue Demons for 32 the last time these two teams met in January in South Bend. Of course, LaFonso Ellis anchored by Sweet and Bennett from the outside, both guards averaging close to 17 points a ball game to go along with Ellis's 18.3. Jordy for three. In and out on the rebound by the Fonz. And now we get a foul called on Joe Doherty as he battled for the basketball at midcourt. So Both Joe Doherty picks it up his first and the first on the Blue Demons. Both teams look real juiced up trying to push the ball out on the floor, getting the fast break and the opportunity shots. We played almost two minutes. DePaul leading 4-2. And the Irish for the basketball. Here's Bennett again. I'm very surprised they have not gone to Ellis so far down low. And John Curtis Price has him locked up so far. He's barely been able to get a hand on the ball, much less get a shot on. Now Taylor. But look at Price work on defense. Shot by the, uh, Bennett from the corner is no good. Or sweet, I should say. And now back to Elmer Bennett on the offensive rebound. For those of you who don't like to watch the ball, you can watch that matchup down low. See a lot of pushing and shoving. Good move. Very nice pass that time from Keith Tower down low to Ellis. Ellis did a lot of work early to get good position. So the Fonz, averaging 18 points a game, has his first two, and we're tied at four. David Booth, whistle inside, and we get an offensive foul called against Curtis Price, trying to lay a screen down low for Booth. Definitely so. Price on a screen on Taylor, and of course, when you're a screener, he let Booth through the screen, then he moved over to get Taylor. Once the offensive player goes through, the screener cannot move. Elmer Bennett. You got a mismatch right now with Doherty on Taylor down low. I would think that Notre Dame might see that and go right to Taylor. And David Booth has Elmer Bennett out on the left wing here. Good entry pass, but Howard jumped in front to steal. Demons look for the lead with Davis. Irish in a big hurry the other way, and Damon Sweet gets it. Good play by Alfonso Ellis, quickly getting a rebound, throwing the lead pass down floor. Barely glanced down at my scorebook, John, and Damon Sweet was 12 feet from the basket. And we get a reaching foul out front. Elmer Bennett will pick that one up, trying to guard David Booth. Well, he switched out to try to cut Booth off. Bennett on a nice defensive move, but he reached in with that arm. open for the three, didn't take it. Does now. And DePaul is 0 for 3 from beyond the three-point strike. And the coaches of the bench say, hey, good shot. They want him to take that shot. Right now, David Booth struggling a little bit on the offensive end, not getting a shot early in the ball game. I would think Joy Meyer would like to try to get him an early, easy shot to kind of make him... David Sweet right baseline, no good. Great pass by Ellis inside the tower. John McLeod said Ellis was playing all facets of the ball game. Offense, defense, and nice pass there from LaFonso. Irish on top, 8-6. Davis got the run. Terry Davis. Terry Davis with four. We are tied at eight. Terry Davis has the hand tonight so far. Comes off the pick so nicely. Goes up immediately with the jump shot. Tower trying to post up inside on Howard this time. Now Sweet against Davis. That's going to be an offensive foul on David Sweet. David Sweet stuck out the left forearm and knocked Terry Davis to the floor. And we get
get a timeout here at the Rosemont Horizon with 15.31 to play in the first half. Nothing settled yet. It's 8-8. Eight, eight. When the Beck brothers started their business, they carefully planned everything, including saving money with AT&T International Business Alternative, a new plan for small companies. We got the Yosaki account. The one thing they didn't plan was growing overnight. Fortunately, AT&T offers Pro Watts International, a savings plan that keeps pace with their business and adjusted to their growing needs even before they could. We got the Martinez account. A world of help from AT&T. Call now and find out how much we can save you. I'll take the special. I'll take the special. I'll take the special. And you should too. The monthly specials at True Value Hardware Stores. Like this 37-piece ratcheting screwdriver bit and socket set from Allenite for just $9.88. Make repairs yourself and save. In March, get it for just $9.88 while supplies last. It's just one of the terrific specials at True Value. The neighborhood hardware stores with national buying power. I'll take the special. This great Midwest moment is brought to you by Old Style Classic Draft and Draft Life. The 1960-61 season ended with Cincinnati going to its third straight Final Four, playing its Buckeye State neighbor, Ohio State. Cincinnati led till late in the game when a Buckeye basket forced overtime. Paul Hogue hit two free throws, helping Cincinnati clinch a 70-65 win to become Cincinnati's 22nd consecutive victory and its first of two straight national titles. This great Midwest moment was brought to you by Old Style Classic Draft and Draft Life. Fifteen thirty-one left to play in the first half here at the Rosemont Horizon. It's eight apiece. Notre Dame and DePaul. And on display tonight, John, for the Blue Demons of DePaul, two of their top five all-time leading scorers playing their last game in this building. Stephen Howard and David Booth. Of course, uh, an added statistic, both of them. Stephen Howard seventh in career rebounds, Booth 15th. So they're they're all around players. And of course, you don't play D for Joey Meyer. You don't play. Uh, Stephen Howard found out a little bit of that early in the year. Got uh, benched. David Booth has really come along through these years too, John, and become a, at least an adequate, if not a good, defensive player. He knows what to do. It's just a question of getting it done. Right now, DePaul three for nine. Notre Dame four for six. Notre Dame leads in the rebounding, 5-3. to three. Booth trying to get a shot desperately. Way up, too high, tip, no, still battled for, and Joe Doherty, and now Lafonso Ellis. Ellis to sweep, and Terry Davis ran it down. Great play by Terry Davis, deflecting that ball, and then rushing out and getting it. Talk about all-around players, he may be their best. The ball pulls it back out and resets the offense. Still tied, 8 apiece. Inside 15 minutes left in the first half. Howard in traffic down low. Doherty for three. And DePaul not doing well from outside that strike. They're 0 for 4 so far in the game. Howard Nathan up off DePaul's bench, and he'll check in with the next dead ball. He's a guy who can ignite your offense. There's not much doubt about that. Sweets a threat from there. Though. Billy Taylor. Tower lets it go. Battle four and run down in the corner by Elmer Bennett. And he'll come back out and reset things. Bennett guarded by Joe Doherty. They wheel it inside again to Tower. Nice head and shoulders back, and he's got it off the glass. Keith Tower with a couple of baskets. Nice move down low by the senior out of Pittsburgh. 10-8. Played very well his last seven ball games. Doubled his scoring average. Seven rebounds a game and shooting 50% for the season. He's only 40, so he's on a pretty good streak. Helping Irish win their eight of their last nine. Hook pass Booth. Go inside for Howard in a dunk. Stephen Howard was six, and we're tied at 10. I think Joy Meyer has to look right now to try to get David Booth off the schneid, as we call it. Trying to get him a good shot just to get him in the scores column, relax him a little bit. Get a hold down low as 
Curtis Price trying to uh, deny the basketball. So Curtis Price picks up foul number one. We'll make it number two. We'll see who's coming out here. Price is out. Doherty is out. Jeff Stern also in, as is Howard Nathan. Stern now, John, will try to check Ellis, and that may be a tough task for him. Bennett shot short. Ellis bounced out to get the rebound. Now stolen by Davis. Terry Davis got it. Davis held it back and then rolled it up on the rim and in. Six points for him and a 12-10 to Paul lead. It'll be interesting to watch the matchups right now. You hit on a good one. Alfonso Ellis and Stern. Price so quick did a great job on him. I think they'll go to Lafonso very quickly. As you see, Notre Dame struggling with DePaul's aggressive defense, getting their seventh turnover right there. Those numbers starting to mount up for the Fighting Irish. David Booth playing good post defense on Taylor that time, and John McLeod didn't like it one bit. John McLeod better hopes DePaul doesn't find the rim. DePaul not shooting very well so far. Howard lobs it over in the corner for Davis. Terry, Nathan's gonna, oh, thought he was gonna let it go. Now he does. Well, you he got it. He's, he's coming off four in a row the other night against Marquette at the end of the ball game. Hey, what I can't understand is why he even hesitated. <laughs> that one pretty deep there. Blue hey. Demons by five, and the crowd is into it. All you have to do is listen to know that this is the loudest crowd this building has seen all season long. Down low, knocked away, battle for the basketball, and Lafonso Ellis comes out with it to Bennett. Too hard for the three. Day, uh, Nathan tipped it back up the floor. Howard again for three. And Ellis cleans the glass for the fighting iron. These guys are juiced up tonight. They're flying it from everywhere. Sweet no good in Booth has the rebound for DePaul. It's too bad these guys don't have crowds like this every night. This is so kind of, I want to tell you that. They're trying to get Booth the shot right now. He's got to make sure the shot comes to him and that he doesn't try to find it. He looked a little gimpy downstairs that time. Here's Howard on the turn. Stephen Howard with eight. DePaul by seven. You got to be careful in a game like this. You don't get overwinded. A lot of times you'll overextend yourself because of the crowd and you lose your win as Notre Dame executes excellent offense on that time. John McLeod, of course, throughout his college and pro career, known for how his teams play excellent half-court offense. That was Damon Sweet who scored the field goal. He has two baskets for four points in 17-12. Howard out front with Tower on him. Here's Nathan and now Damon. And now Boot. There's that jump hook. Way short, though, on the rebound by the Fonz. David showing some rustiness of not playing in all two weeks. Boy, Booth took a shot right to the jaw from Elmer Bennett's head. Excellent job by Bennett. Has the angle to the basket. Initiates contact. When he has the angle, he's okay. You see it right there. Booth not in good position, and Bennett's got a chance for a three-point play. Here it is again, John. Look at the jaw right here, right. Boom. Oh, that could have been a knockout punch. Foul number one on Booth and the fourth on the Blue Demons as a team. Because you know Notre Dame, John, is going to test out that ankle of David Booth. And Bennett put it on the floor and see, or tried to see there if he could go past him, and he did. Elmer Bennett calmly strokes in his three-point play, and we get a timeout with 10.25 to play in the first half. John McLeod's team was down seven, but now they're on the way back, 17-15.
brings 24 million people together. British Airways, the world's favorite airline. When sports cream, when arms are sore, when legs ache, when muscles hurt, why sports cream? Massaging sports cream in brings fast pain relief. No medicine-y smell, no odor. Why sports cream? Because it works. Athlete's foot. Every year, over 28 million Americans get it. Try NP27. Its doctor-recommended ingredient stops burning and itching fast. NP27. Nothing's a better cure for athlete's foot. Part of the sellout crowd here tonight at the Rosemont Horizon, the first one we've seen all year. Rowdy crowd, too. Oh, they are, too. <laughs> this is really fun. You get everybody into the game, the band's kicking it up over there on the far side, and everybody's having fun except the coaches. Howard Nathan into the ball game, of course, at the end of the Marquette game, if you had a chance to watch it, had four three-pointers. This one, he may have gotten four for this somewhere. It's about five or six feet behind the 19-6 range. <laughs> I think his second three-point attempt was a little quick. He was trying it off the board. That's a lot That's right a there lot. for Price. Nice defense that time. You thought the same thing I did. What was he doing from out there? <laughs> I did. It ran across my mind for a second, but I thought even yeah. Howard. Good defense that. that time by Billy Taylor. He put a body on Price, smelled that play coming, and the ball just went awry. They rode him right out of bounds. Down deep to LaFonso Ellis against Stern. His shot is short. Stern got a foot on it. Now it's loose. And Price is part of the jump ball situation that will give the ball back to Notre Dame. The alternate possession arrow pointing in the Irish favor right here. Stephen Howard is back. Curtis Price will depart for the moment. So Howard Stern, Booth, Nathan, and Terry Davis on the floor for the call. Inbounds played a sweet no good, and Howard up for the rebound. Howard must have got a little winded. Joey put him down for eight or ten seconds. He's got eight points early. Nathan by everybody. Third and score the basket. The penetration by Howard Nathan set up Jeff Stern for the hoop, and he's headed for the free throw line to chance for the three-point play. I think Howard had shoot first here on his mind, but got up there amongst the big guys, had nowhere to go. At least you thought that. And the little fella bounces it off the floor to Stern for the three-point play. Boy, it takes a, a lot of good court sense to know where everybody's at on that. Foul was called on John Ross, who had been in the game for about 10 seconds and who now is out of the game. Stern's free throw. Always an adventure for Jeff up there, but he made that one. And it's back to a five-point Blue Demon edge, and Kleinschmidt almost has the steal. Tommy Kleinschmidt has checked in for DePaul. Sweet. Had a shot, passed it up. DePaul, 8 out of 19. Notre Dame, 7 out of 13. Notre Dame doubling DePaul's output on the glass, 12 to 6. Bennett got a step on Nathan as Howard slipped. The yo-yo, no good. Nathan made the steal, two on one. All the way, and he'll go to the line for two. Howard Nathan and Terry Davis down, not really spaced out very well on that fast break. Nathan took it on in, and he was fouled by Damon Sweet. Actually, Sweet did a nice job defensively. Nathan on the Sweet steal. <laughs> Takes it down. I thought they had pretty good space. I thought Bennett did a pretty good job. I mean, Sweet did a pretty good job making Nathan commit early. Howard had nowhere to go but up on the glass. First free throw is in. Howard Nathan, a 71% free throw shooter this year, averaging seven points a game. His field goal shooting has suffered, but he really had a rocky start in the early part of his freshman season. Has really come on now to be an offensive force, uh, not only uh, scoring, but of course setting people up, as we saw with Stern a couple of trips down the floor. Ago. Well, one of the things that happens, Howard not getting as much time as he wanted early. You, you come in the ball game and you, you try to make things happen too quickly, whether it's shooting or giving assists, and he did struggle a lot early. Joey Meyer gave him more time. He relaxed, and he's going to be a great one. Brooks Boyer is on the floor now for Notre Dame. Boyer, six foot one inch sophomore out of Jackson, Michigan. He's 15. And back on for DePaul, Joe Doherty replacing Terry Davis. Ellis trying to put it inside to 
defended, but it's knocked away by Stephen Howard. Stephen Howard very lively tonight, both on offense and defense. Got a couple steals already. A little too lively that time with the feet. He shuffled them, and the turnover goes back to Notre Dame. You know, on a play like that, even if you don't, I think they're going to call it. I'm not sure he did there. But it looked like it, so they blew it. 8.35 to play in the first half. Howard was knocked down, and Tower is open inside. Stern got a piece of the first shot, and we got a foul on Tower. No basket. Ellis dunked it, but that was way after the whistle. Keith Tower called for the personal foul. And that'll be number two on Tower. Very nice help from Stern on the play. Howard gets knocked down. Tower had a pretty easy shot, but Jeff Stern across to help. Turnovers continue to plague the Irish as they're shooting much better out rebounding to Paul. But too many times they're not even getting a shot. Nathan guarded by Elmer Bennett. Skip pass across to Howard. Howard with Tower, nowhere to go. Nathan wide open for the three. It's way short. Irish trying to run. Brooks Boyer. He got it. Brooks Boyer's first basket of the night, 21-17. Not much time for Brooks Boyer before tonight. 6-1 guard, only shooting 43% from the field. Looked like he was a 90% shooter on that fast break. Howard for three. Back iron. Billy Taylor dancing along the right side, and an offensive foul. Stephen Howard got right in front of him, and the foul goes against Taylor, and the ball goes back to the Blue Demons here. A lot of times you'll get a foul called on you maybe because of what you do before the foul rather than during the foul. A little fancy Dan there doesn't get him anywhere, and Taylor draws the offensive foul. John McLeod not happy about it. His team down four. We'll return to the Rosemont Horizon right after these words. There's so many times in this world where you just don't have control over your own work or your own life, and so when you get that feeling of control, whether it's a car or something else, it's just a great feeling. A good car gives you good information, and it gives you good information all the time. That's quite a feeling to be able to go around the corner like that. And the better seat you're in, the more you're feeling what the car is doing. This car feels like an extension of you. We can make this adjustment because you have the confidence to do that. That, to me, also is, is the sense of safety and the sense of control. This month, American Express will sponsor World Cup skiing in Aspen. And when that happens, you'll see a peaceful resort nestled in the Rockies get turned upside down. The American Express card for everything Aspen has to offer, from lift tickets to a night on the town. The card, the American Express card. Don't leave home without it. Great dunks. Oh, great moves. Great basketball. The Great Midwest Conference. That's the kind of crowd we have in the Rosemont Horizon tonight. Even though South Bend's just a 90-mile drive down the interstate from here, an overwhelmingly pro-Blue Demon crowd in the Rosemont Horizon tonight. Last game at Notre Dame, Bennett had a, a career game for himself. One of the interesting statistics, though, is during that ball game, Notre Dame only had 10 turnovers. They averaged 16 and a half a game. They already have 10 here tonight. DePaul playing very aggressive overplay defense, both half court and full court. Four of those turnovers have come on charging fouls. DePaul, eight out of 21, Notre Dame eight out of 17. Notre Dame continues to dominate, however, on the board, 15 to eight. Joe Doherty, Tom Kleinschmidt, first shot, air ball, out of bounds. Who do we get? Out of bounds to Notre Dame. The Irish, who were hot early, have slacked off considerably, and 
DePaul, John, as you pointed out, under 40% so far. Davis back on for Kleinschmidt. That was a quick hook, right? Real quick. Kleinschmidt went baseline. Joey's serious about this one. No room for any error at all tonight. You don't do what he wants, he's going to take you out. Helmer Bennett strokes the three. Helmer Bennett with eight. Nathan to Doherty. Small lineup in the ball game for DePaul at this point. But Nathan Doherty and Terry Davis. Howard over the top of his head, no good, and Ellis corrals the rebound. No white shirts in there on the offensive glass that time. 21-20, the Irish looking for the lead here with six and a half to play. In order to get offensive rebounds, you have to run some offense, some picks, some screens, things of that nature. That's why Notre Dame's doing good on the boards. They're doing some of that. DePaul shooting a lot of outside jump shots and one-on-one -on -one moves. Has to run some offense. Lafonso Ellis has only two points, but he's really been able to find the open man. Here's Nathan, and he missed it. Again, a one-on-one -on -one move. Notre Dame immediately gets the rebound. Bennett was going to pass it, then decided to go up for the shot. And in the meantime, he was fouled by Howard Nathan. Nathan pleading his case with the officials to no avail. Be interesting to see what would happen if that had not, if this was not the one-on-one, -on -one, but which will give a... Damon Sweet has come back on for the Irish. Give Ben an attempt for two shots regardless if he made the first one, but they're going to give him two anyway. He might have been looking to pass on that one. Notre Dame dominating the boards, and I think a lot of that is simply from running good offense, getting mismatches because you have switches, getting offensive players inside of defensive players, and therefore getting rebounds. DePaul, a lot of one-on-one -on -one and long jumpers so far tonight. Also into the ball game for the Irish for the first time tonight is Malik Russell, six foot seven inch freshman out of Brooklyn, New York. He's number 21. Bennett missed a ball, and the littlest guy on the floor has got the rebound, Joe Doherty. Doherty trying to run it down in the corner, does. Now he's in trouble. Bounce pass Howard. Fake. Shot way short. Nathan got the rebound. 5-11. So the little guys for DePaul doing the job in the glass on both ends. And the Blue Demons regain the lead. Good positioning and quickness are very important in rebounding. Don't forget that. Ellis dead side and scores. Lafonso Ellis. Good defense is played before your man gets the ball. Ellis much too good a position for Stern. Stern then tries to block the shot. You're in big time trouble. Two mistakes. One, he gets too good a position. Two, keep your hands straight up. Don't come down with it. Nine times out of ten, even if you don't hit the guy, you're going to get a foul. Super strong move by Ellis. Alfonso at the free throw line with one. He's a 67% free throw shooter. For DePaul, David Booth and Curtis Price have both re-entered the lineup. Bonds missed the free throw, and there's Stephen Howard with another rebound. He had 18 boards against Marquette Wednesday night. Ellis had struggled early in the year from the line, hit 19 in a row, now about a 70% shooter. And Terry Davis just a bit too strong, and that's been the case all night, John. These long ones by the Blue Demons have been on target, but they've been just a bit too short or a bit too long. Irish by a point with five minutes left in the opening half here at the Rosemont Horizon. Tower lobbed inside. Nice. Knocked it out of bounds. Almost made the steal. Good defense by Curtis Price. Beat Ellis across the lane. Was in great position. Ellis, however, did a nice job of mixing things up with Price and deflecting the ball off of him out of bounds. Give Notre Dame another shot. Tower out. John Ross into the game for Notre Dame. Nathan down low with Ben. Quick hands by Howard Nathan. Well, oh. you, can't, you can't even blink an eye when that guy's hanging around. Nathan knocked it away, then drew the personal foul on Bennett. And on Elmer Bennett, that's number two. If you can see this, watch it. <laughs> he is really quick. Boom, it's gone. Bennett looks away, looks down low to try to post up Ellis. Takes his eye off Nathan. 
the bonus. Shazam gets his pocket picked. Howard split a pair at the line a moment ago. His first one here is good. You know, Nathan, a sign of a great player is a guy who can hurt you so many ways. Nathan can hurt you from three-point range, penetrating on offense, dishing off, and you saw right there defensively. He'll be a guy who later in his career obviously will be able to control a ball game at both ends of the floor. His free throw tied the game at 24. Russell guard at 6-7. Russell guarded by Davis, and Davis could put some defense on you, too. That time, yeah. Howard, Howard Nathan better be real careful. One too many reaches. Well, that one, it's interesting if he reached down on that one. Now, if you're the good defensive players will tell you to do what he did last time, pop the ball up. You have a less a chance to get an arm. You watch here. Howard Nathan will go down. Boom. See down there on the arm. Howard shouldn't say a word. That's a foul. If you go up, you have less a chance to get a foul. It's harder for the ref to see that arm on arm out there on the floor because it's underneath the offensive player's arm rather than right there on top, very visible. Damon Sweet shooting into an arm-waving, sign-waving crowd, and he's able to make the first right, of the one-and-one. One. Irish are a 69% free throw shooting team. Sweet the best at 81. You don't want to foul him. Senior out of Beaumont, Texas. And he makes them both. Six in the game now for Damon Sweet. 26-24, the Irish back in front. Ball into their 1 4 offense. High screen set by Howard. Now the double team on Nathan. He's got to be able to go by Malik Russell, and he does. Well, Notre Dame double teamed, and then let Curtis Price roam, knowing that his jump shot couldn't hurt him. Terry Davis off the back iron. Booth battling for the rebound. And now oh, great save. Bounce. And Howard Nathan saved a sure basket for Notre Dame that time. Sweet was all alone. Headed for the layup, and Howard Nathan knocked it out of bounds. Again, Nathan with the quick hands and the quick feet. As you said, Dan, deflecting a sure two. Blue Demon's wearing out the back of that rim. Irish not a whole lot better. But good enough to have a two-point lead here with 3.50 to go. Defense! 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 Shot clock's down to 20. This is one of the longer possessions of the game so far. Ellis Trammell got away with it and then scored. Again, his position is too good down there. Notre Dame excellent at running that half-court offense. Very patient, getting their leading score of the ball exactly where he wants it. 28-24 Notre Dame. Howard may have walked himself, but we get a foul. Maybe it's a walking night, huh? <laughs> Free. Free walks. Maybe it's just my eye. <laughs> Howard using his quickness that time. He showed Ross that quickness earlier in the half, and John McLeod had Ross out immediately. Howard trying to get himself going again as he had eight quick points. Really hasn't scored since about the 14-minute mark, and we're at 3.20 to go in the half. He's got two free throws here, and he makes the first. Six foot the, nine senior, John, out of Dallas, Texas. You notice the pace of this ball game early on, very quick, very rapid, up and down the floor to DePaul's favor. Right now, it's half-court offense by the Irish that is dominating this ball game, and if you'll notice, the Irish are up three. So tempo is going to be very important to watch tonight. John Ross, 16-footer. Hit the back of the rim. Tipped out in front to Sweet, though. Damon Sweet rises up and hits it on the baseline. Damon Sweet has eight. Biggest lead of the night for the Irish is five. The ball needs to balance up on offense. Well, they're trying very hardly and maybe too hard to get David Booth a, a shot. Sometimes you just got to let it come in the flow of the offense rather than looking for it too hard. 
Booth has played considerable time tonight. He's scoreless so far. Terry Davis. For the field goal, eight points for Davis. Davis likes to go left. Take that 15-foot jumper from the baseline. He's almost got that pat. He'll put his name down there. Billy Taylor trying to go baseline against his counterpart number 30, and Booth made him step out of bounds. Billy Taylor out of bounds. DePaul will have it. 2:04 to play in the first half, and the Fighting Irish leading by three. A warm thought from the White Sox. Baseball is just around the corner. Get ready for the season with an upper deck box full season ticket plan and get an authentic seat from Old Comiskey Park free. Call 924-1000. And remember to think spring. Gillette presents Sensor, the system, the technology that will change the way you shave forever. Sensor, twin blades set on springs to read your face and respond. Independent suspension to sense and adjust to every curve of your face. No other razor comes close. Gillette Sensor, for the best shave a man can get. Dad, we need to talk. I know you don't like Ted, but he's asked me to be his wife. He asked me to be his wife. I'm getting married. No! I'm gonna marry Ted. Dad, you're not losing a daughter. You're gaining Ted. With an AT&T card, a busy signal's no problem. Dial pound, one, two, three. Send a message that'll get through later. Hello? Sweetheart, it's Dad. I recorded this. You know, maybe I was wrong about Ted. He's not so bad. Yes! Besides, it's not like you're gonna marry the guy. Oh, they're staying up late tonight for the Fighting Irish and the Blue Demon. You think that kid will make it? <laughs> He's looking a little drowsy at this yeah. point. We'll check him out later on. Now that baby's staying awake the whole time. She's ready. Seven dinner. <laughs> Howard Nathan is, I believe, kept DePaul so far into this ball game. He's going to be a big key because I think DePaul needs to have an up-tempo game in order to win this one, the way it looks right now. Stephen Howard had a shot at it. Now goes baseline up, blocked by LaFonza Willis. But a foul before the block, and this one was going against John Ross, I believe. Stephen Howard using his quickness down low. Irish seemed to roam off of Price. And Ellis comes across. That could have been whistled an offensive foul. You saw Howard's arm lead him to the basket. That's a no-no. Maybe some body contact early caused the foul on Ellis. The foul was Ellis, not Ross, and that's the first one on LaFonzo. Stephen Howard struggling just a bit at the foul line. He He's, struggled a little bit last game, yeah, too, against Marquette. Sure Three out of five up there tonight. We've mentioned many times, although Howard should be used to it, the ends of this arena are very, very deep, and they are not good shooting backgrounds for free throws. You must have almost 50 yards before you have any type of background, and it's tough to shoot. Well, the Paul is building a house out there tonight. Trouble at the free throw line. Can't make a field goal. And Blue Demons trail it by three here with a minute and a half to play in the first half. Goal to the house. <laughs> Driving baseline shot by Damon Sweet. Damon Sweet in double figures with 10. Howard post up. Got it that time. And Howard also goes into double figures. 32-29. Anticipated, knocked it away. Sweet has it now. He'll rise up again. And Damon Sweet doing a great job for John McLeod tonight. 12 points of the game for him. Tom Kleinschmidt's got a 
learn when you got a guy like Sweet really popping him. You got to go pick him up. Don't worry about your man. You got a guy streaking. And Terry Davis right back for the Blue Demon. He has 10 points. Things heating up here in the end. Shot clock is off. Irish have the floor spread. Well, they'll go, go for last, one shot. They'll attempt to go for the last 30 seconds. No shot clock. And Klein Schmidt just missed that one. Malik Russell having a little bit of a problem handling the ball out front. Huh? I always wondered why guys dribbled between their legs and it really didn't take them anywhere, you know? Just another time to opportunity to make a mistake. Well, they're going to let him go with Terry Davis. Now he pumps it down to Ellis. Ah, shot by Alfonso Ellis. And that will bring the first half to a close. Lafonso Ellis with a fast finish. And after 20 minutes of play here at the Rosemont Horizon, it's Notre Dame leading DePaul by five, 36-31. We'll be back with our halftime activities right after these messages.